Hi, everyone. My name is Ashley Craven, and I am the Marketing Director of Griffin House Books. Today, we had uh, an awesome opportunity to chat with Aaron Burr, uh, an expert in early childhood education, about some tips and tools and strategies for parents and educators during this incredibly challenging time of coronavirus. Um, we just wanted to share that we recognize that whether you're a parent that is unexpectedly home with your children or a, uh, an educator who is trying to mitigate the effects of uh, coronavirus in your center, in your classroom, we are here for you and we recognize the daily struggle and the daily uncertainty that you must have as we all do. Um, we wanted to create a series with some of our Griffin House authors and early childhood experts to share with you some key insights and um, tools and strategies that you can do at home to help continue the learning and to uh, continue to nurture children as they are just as scared and uncertain and confused as we are, but we wanna help them to feel loved and feel nurtured and feel like there is some sort of new normal uh, and routine. So. Um, we're really thankful that Erin Burr was able to connect with us from San Diego, where she's been quarantined for 10 days. Erin uh, Burr uh, has a master's in education and uh, an early childhood education uh, and more than 15 years of experience working with young children. So Erin uh, shares some great insight into what she's been doing with her children. She has two twins, in, uh, she's twins in third grade and some other tips for folks to do with um, whether you're either preschoolers or infants or toddlers in your center. So please do um, watch our little impromptu webinar and thank you uh, for joining us. We are here with you and um, hope to support you in any way that we can. Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining us today uh, during our virtual chat with our Griffin House author, Aaron Burr. Um, Aaron is um, the author of one of our Griffin House titles, for infants and toddlers, Little Walks, Big Adventures. Um, and right now we just wanted to, to share with you during this scary and uncertain time, um, just some tips and ways that you parents can help to keep your children stimulated at home when you're at, un at home unexpectedly or ways that you educators, while you're still in the classroom and still trying to mitigate the effects of coronavirus that, um, that you can use, whether again, you're at home or you're at school. Um, we know that this is a scary time and we wanted to share some valuable resources and some ways to help children feel nurtured and uh, engaged and, and use this time to, to continue their learning. Um, so Erin, thank you so much for joining me, albeit virtually, both from our own homes. <laughs> Um, yeah, can you share with our audience uh, where you're joining us from? I'm joining you from San Diego, from my fancy home office. Um, <laughs> and we've been um, at home now for, I think this is the 10th day um, with me and my, I have twins that are in third grade. And yeah, so we've been homeschooling and staying in and haven't left the house in a long time. It's really weird. <laughs> right, right. So yeah, a 10 day quarantine so far because California was one of the first, I believe, yeah. to to do the shelter in place. Is that correct? Yes. I think, so, yeah. Yeah, I think we were the first, maybe Washington. I don't know. Yeah, definitely one of the first. Yeah. yeah. It's been interesting. Right. So how has it been going with your with your twins? You said third grade. Yep, they're in third grade. Um, it's going pretty well. It's an adjustment. I mean, it's hard for them to understand what's going on, even though they're, you know, a lot older than some kids. But um, yeah, just adjusting to being here and the, like restrictions of not being able to go see their friends and the change in their routine. And, it, you know, it's just all scary. And I think they, um, you know, they feel that we're stressed too. So I think kids are just so in tune to how you're feeling as a parent. Um, so they feel that too, and it comes out in big emotions. So I don't know, like this morning we had, we were doing spelling words and we had a little bit of a meltdown and had to take a break <laughs> and <laughs> come try again. Yeah. But yeah, but for the most part, they're adjusting pretty well. Kids are so resilient that way. 
Yeah, and I know I'm, I'm, I'm guessing that for parents, especially parents at home trying the homeschool thing for probably the first time in their lives. I bet it's really helpful to hear that you, an expert um, <laughs> with, you know, early childhood education, that you're even dealing with, you know, sweet little meltdowns and trying to navigate through that. And um, what are some of the tips that, that you've used, or maybe not tips, but activities or some of the things that you've done differently with, with your children that you might recommend to, to your audience? Um, well, I think, I mean, the first thing I'd say is that, um, one of my kids' teachers sent home, like, I sent, like, an email, I think, um, kind of midweek last week, just saying, because she had been flooding us with, like, reading assignments and spelling assignments and, like, all these apps we could be using and, like, all this stuff, and I was so stressed out, and then I think Wednesday she sent this email that said, just, you know, everyone needs to take a deep breath and know that it's going to be okay. And all these activities that I'm sending you or assignments that I'm sending you, they're optional. Um, you know, it's ideas for you if you want to keep, you know, working on certain skills with your kids, but just to know that everyone's going to be okay. Everyone's in the same boat. Um, I think she said something about how like, you know, teachers are experts at this. Like when they all eventually go back to school, you know, they'll take the kids where they are and they'll teach them from there. I mean, that's what teachers do. And even though I am a teacher and I've taught for so long, like it just, I needed someone else to say that to me, you know? So I thought that was really helpful. Um, but otherwise, like, um, you know, finding a new routine, obviously I think kids thrive on routine. Um, I know mine do like, and it's, you know, not like a super like detailed, um, like time-based schedule, but just kind of them knowing what's coming up. Like we're going to do school for a little while and then we're going to do outside time for a little while. Um, that kind of thing is helpful for them just to know what's coming. But the things that I think we're doing differently that have helped us um, now in day 10 um, <laughs> are finding other ways to connect with family and friends. Because um, I know I'm missing that. I think my kids really are too. Um, and then the other one is to get outside as much as possible. Um, so I don't know if you want me to go more into that. Um, yeah, give some examples. Yeah, um, that would so be great. Us, I think. Yeah, I think. I was um, just going to say, I think that it's great that you're sharing some vulnerability as a teacher yourself and, you know, as an expert yourself to say that you needed to hear from another teacher that it's okay. It's hard. And I, I wonder yeah. if, you know, for our audience, for our, the teachers in our audience that are hearing this and thinking, oh, thank goodness. You know, so I, I really commend you on that vulnerability. So thank you. Oh, well, thank you. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, the first, I mean, the first one is just finding other ways to talk to families and friends or just kind of have play dates with families and friends. Um, so we've been starting our days every morning around like breakfast time, um, either Skyping or FaceTiming with like a friend or a grandparent. Um, and I've found, because we've always lived far away from our family, so they've done a fair amount of FaceTiming anyways, not every day, but um, like we are now, but they've done a fair amount. Of, and so from the time my kids were like probably two and on, like they could do FaceTime, but I learned that if I just gave them the phone and just said, okay, talk to grandma, um, then they didn't know what to say. And they just get super crazy and or they just run away from the phone. Um, so I found giving them like an activity to do with grandma or whoever it is, um, is really helpful. So, um, like when they were little, like you could give them, like ask grandma, like, would she be willing to like pull out one of her adult coloring books or one of her, like just a paper and a pencil and will she color with them? And so you get them the same sort of materials and then they can color, um, with grandma you know, at the same time. And it just kind of gives them something to talk about because they're sharing an experience right. together. So show, you know, show grandma your picture. And, and my mother-in-law especially is so fantastic at like asking them questions too. So like, you know, she'll say something like, you know, what color do you think I should use with this? And then they can pick her next crayon color or whatever. Um, and now that they're a little older, like they're doing it with their friends too. So like they're playing games over, you know, Skyping. Like my son had a right. play date to play Battleship with one of his friends. Um, oh, they I love that. Their little boards and then they, you know, talked to each other through Skype and they, you know, played Battleship. 
Um, and my daughter had a dance party with her friends the other day, which you could totally do with little oh. kids. Like, you know, pick a favorite song that you all know, or if you're a preschool teacher, you could send out like, you know, here are three songs or videos or recordings or whatever that I use with them. And then, you know, you both put it on at your house and then they can dance together because that's, you know, something. Oh, most that's perfect. Yeah. What do you think, um, what do you think about like infants and toddlers? Do you think those activities would be good for that age group as well? Or would you recommend some tailored or tailoring it a bit? Um, I mean, I think like the coloring they could definitely do. Um, and like dancing, they could definitely, you know, kids that age love to dance or like sing together. Um, I was, you know, I think you could do something like play hide and seek with grandma where like, mm, you know, I you're in a room and so you, um, like take your stuffed animal or whatever it might be and like you tell grandma to cover her eyes and then go hide it somewhere in your room and then have grandma like tell you where to go look like, oh is it behind the chair is it whatever and then grandma could also hide something or grandpa could also hide something in their house or um for you to I love it. that because I I feel like you know video chatting or facetiming with with infants and toddlers can be really tough because they just get on the phone and they just want to touch at it and or even <laughs> even a, an older child like you said earlier they just go wild and they don't really know what to say and and I think it's it's really interesting to give some direction to the to the conversation to say hey let's do an activity together to to really do the same kind of tap into what grandma and grandpa would be doing with with their grandchildren if they were sitting next to them you wouldn't necessarily be saying like so what's your favorite color what did you do today tell me everything you would just spend time together and you would color together like you said and I think it's really I think that's really beautiful I like that and approachable yeah yeah it's been working really well for us give them a little yeah. social interaction kind of when we can't have normal social interaction yeah yeah what about so I think um I love so much about your book Little Walks Big Adventures and I think it's so cool how you talk about activities that either parents or educators can do um, in their daily routine. I, I love that you talk about a lot of things, especially with parents that they can do, where it's saying, hey, you have to go to the grocery store with your child anyway. Why don't you take that and make that a learning experience where you're sorting oranges or sorting different fruit and so on and so forth. I love that. Are there ways that you can continue that learning and, and adapt some of the concepts from your book that would make sense now for folks who are quarantined or have a shelter in place or you know maybe they are going to the grocery store but that experience looks so different than it did two weeks ago what do you think about that um, yeah I mean I feel like a lot of a lot of what's in my book are walks and so I mean at least here in California like you're still permitted to leave your house to exercise as long as you're staying mm -hmm. um, six feet away from other people and so I mean I've talked we take usually at least a walk a day um, and so I've talked to my kids about like, you know, if we see someone coming, like one of us has to cross the street. So, you know, just stay close to mom, like that kind of thing. But otherwise, like, I mean, you can take walks around your neighborhood and there's so many things you can do with walks. Um, and so many ways to like integrate the things you're learning about. Um, with littler kids often, like I like to give them like kind of scavenger hunt type things. So mm. based on something that we're learning. So colors or numbers, or if they're really interested in cars, like different vehicles, and just taking like a piece of paper and drawing like tic-tac-toe lines on it, and then having them help me fill it in. So like, what are some colors we could look for today on our walk? And then having them list colors and then giving them something like a marker or a dabber or some stickers or something to like cover up each one as you're walking around. And just, I mean, if you can do like one of those a week or something, just to kind of break up, like, you know, you're walking around the same neighborhood every day. Yeah, just to kind of I love that. More exciting. Um, or, you know, like if you're, it's springtime now, at least here, and I know soon everywhere else. Um, and so like, you know, it's what we're learning about spring. Maybe we're reading books about spring and um, talking about butterflies or what flowers or whatever it might be and so having them make a list of like what signs of spring might we see outside so flowers and grass peeking through the snow and you know whatever it might be and then go on the walk and have them see if they can find all of those things on your list um, yeah that's 
That's awesome. I think so. It's really, it's really sweet in my neighborhood. So I live in North Carolina in Winston-Salem and um, I'm on this little Facebook group for my, my little neighborhood in Winston. And people have been posting that there's a calendar of, um, of things to put in your window yeah. throughout the week. And so I think today, I can't remember, I feel like today was like rainbows or something or uh, bears, like a stuffed animal bear. But anyway, that they're sharing with the community to say, hey, put these things in your window for children, but as you're saying, when they're going out on these little exploratory walks, that they can do this kind of a scavenger hunt where they're pointing out where they're seeing these things. Have you heard about that in California too? Yeah. Is that yeah, there's a few oh, of those cool. lists that are cool. circulating, and we um, we have some, like, group chats going with, like, you know, my son's group of friends and my daughter's group of friends, like, all the moms, um, and so, like, even just, like, within a, your neighborhood, you can do that, too, just send out, like, you know, can everyone color a rainbow or something, and then right. go walk around. Yeah, we did it with Shamrocks um, for St. Patrick's Day, and then... Um, I think there was one about like fate like silly faces or something they drew sometime last week too yeah yeah so and that's fun and I think what yeah and I think what's cool about that too is you don't have to have children to participate so you can you know if you're whether for for me it's through this community Facebook group and so anyone can post can um, put stuff in their window or as you said you know parents can chat with their you know their parents from the classroom that live nearby or what have you so I think that's yeah. really cool that you can really engage your community whether they are your children's classmates or a completely different age group you know I think that's that's great yeah definitely and again it kind of adds that little bit of socialization in there too you can say like oh all of our friends are doing this too and then you know you can send each other pictures or something just so you kind of feel like you're still in touch with them and connected to them in some way I don't know. It seems to be right. Helpful. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think what else we've been doing. I feel like um, another big thing that we've been doing is like trying to get outside as much as possible. Um, so going for those walks, obviously, but then like also like it's been so super rainy here because it's spring and um, so. <laughs> Two things with that, like one, like I, I tell my kids all the time, like it's a good thing you're a hundred percent waterproof because they can still go outside. <laughs> so, yeah, you know, right. <laughs> boots and raincoats and just going outside and being okay with getting wet and splashing in puddles. Um, and I actually think that's one of the walks in my book is to go for a puddle walk and just like you know challenge your kids. Like let's walk around the block and see where the biggest puddle is on our block. Oh. And, you know, we wouldn't like, want to do that. Exactly. It's so much fun. So much fun to jump in puddles. I feel like I spend so much time telling my kids, like, walk around the puddle, walk around the puddle. But if you put on boots and your raincoat and you're okay with coming home and just changing all your clothes or taking a warm bath or whatever it is, um, you know, it's kind of like going out and playing in the snow. Like, you come home and you're wet and you're cold, but you drink some hot cocoa and you warm up. Um, so just getting right, out and right. jumping in big puddles. Um, yeah, and then when it isn't um, rainy, just being okay with bringing anything you're doing outside. So, I mean, last week, like, we'd have, like, little bursts of sunlight, and so we'd say, like, I'd say, okay, grab your spelling book, and let's go outside, and so we'd <laughs> run outside, or, oh, the sun's out, it's a good time to go play basketball for 10 minutes, you know, so just, you know, taking opportunities That's like that, whenever the sun is out and it looks nice, you know, bringing outside whatever you're doing, like, oh, you're playing dolls right now. Okay, let's take your doll out in the backyard. Maybe they want to have a picnic or, you know, you, your kids are driving around with their trains and so, oh, the sun's out. So <laughs> bring your trains outside and let's draw train tracks on the sidewalk for your trains and drive them around out there. I just feel like fresh air and just that change of scenery when you're inside especially if you're just like in your playroom or your child's bedroom, or whatever it is, like those same walls day after day after day just start to wear on you. And I think as much as you can change the scenery, even just a little bit, just helps everyone's mood. And I don't know, yeah, <laughs> seems to Right, and I think there's, there's a lot to that for adults and children alike. You know, I think fresh air and sunlight, you know, vitamin D, and all of the other beauty that comes from the sun, it has so much to do with your mood and, 
And I think whether you're a two-year-old or a, you know, a six-year-old or a 26-year-old or a 46-year-old, I think it, it really, it makes a big difference. So I love that. I love the idea that, you know, whether you're coloring um, in your coloring book or on paper outside, or you grab your sidewalk chalk and you, you know, and you make some art around your house as well. I've seen um, in my neighborhood, in fact, I've seen, um, <clears throat> I didn't see the children as they did it, but I saw the after effects of just this entire uh, stretch of sidewalk with, I think it was like positive affirmations that little kids wrote to say like, you know, remember to smile, get outside every day and stuff like that. And I thought that was really cool. And, um, yeah. you know, and of course it was then shared in my little community Facebook group. And so even if you didn't get to walk past it in person, it was shared in our group. So I think, you know, that's been cool to see as parents and now educators, homeschoolers are sharing what they're working on with children. So I think it's this fun you know, engaging community that everyone's realizing, hey, we're in this together. You know, we're all trying to figure this out together. And I think that's beautiful. Yeah, I agree. I like the sidewalk idea. I'm going to have my kids do that this afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> Great. <laughs> and I'm not even the, the author <laughs> and expert. <laughs> uh, nice. Well, Erin, thank you so much for, for sharing all of these ideas um, for, you know, parents and educators alike. Again, this is a really tough and scary and challenging time for everyone around the world. And I think, you know, now more than ever, we are relying on each other to, to get through it and to, you know, any way that we can support educators, whether they're in the classroom or they are unexpectedly at home with their, with their children, um, I think, you know, offering them tips and tools and, and any type of um, advice I think is just so important right now to, to create this community. So thank you again for, for sharing and for hanging out with me <laughs> via our virtual little hangout. Um, and thank you all for, for taking a moment to listen. We hope that you are able to get some ideas and some tips from us. Please do um, post any follow-up questions. Um, or post, you know, what activities you've been doing, or if you've tried the activities we've shared and what you thought. Um, if you'd like to post pictures, let us um, let us see how it's all coming to life for you. Um, again, we want to try to share some positivity right now that we know we all so desperately need. Um, so thank you again for joining us, Erin. Thank you again, everyone, for joining us today, and stay tuned. We'll have more of these um, little pop-up videos with other Griffin House authors and early childhood experts to share some ideas for you at home or at school. So thank you and stay, uh, stay safe. Thanks for having me.